I'm going to be removing two base cabinets that I fitted here in Harrogate about 15 months ago. The customer is very happy with the cabinets and wants to keep them. In fact, they want me back to do some floating shelves above, but they've decided to fix this big slope in the floor. So they need the cabinets taken right out, the floor surface taken off, which will be done by a different contractor, and new beams put in. Quite a lot of, quite a lot of stick onto that paint. Well, in this case, I'll leave the handles on the other doors when I package them up. It is the Sailac water-based paint that we swear by. It's worth bearing in mind that although you can get it to touch dry and even stackable in a day or so, full cure doesn't actually happen until a couple of weeks. So perhaps just having that real tight pressure on it, it's, um, it's stuck before it was, was fully cured because we're usually finished painting these jobs only a day or two before they go out for fit. I put the handle back on that one and it's covered over the damage. I'm gonna leave the hinges on and just package it all well up and tell the customer to take care. Just decided to label them. I usually say A for the left-hand base cabinet and B for the right, so that's the door from A and the right side of that cabinet. As I've shared before, that we don't paint the insides or lacquer them in our standard pricing, based on feedback from a lot of customers who said they'd rather pay a little less. Um, it's just good to be aware that then the wood will pick up uh, stains a little bit more. I'm guessing there's been some firewood kept in here for the stove. Now an issue I've shared in previous videos is the tendency of cork lines to crack and move and shrink. So this isn't how I'd like it to be and I've been fighting against that by pre-applying the cork to the edge of the MDF and then really pushing it well in so it's well bonded, smoothing it off, etc. I think at this time, 14, 15 months ago, I think I was doing things that way. So I'm a little disappointed the cork has shrunk that much, uh, but we'll see. First thing I'll do is take out the screws that hold it up. We've just got Craig 32 millimeter pan head screws and some brackets at the back with Posi 17 millimeter screws. So I'll take them all out. You can see that it has bonded to the paint. There is a, a line of old cork there. Perhaps just not as much as it could have done near the surface because the, the top line is sort of about there. So there's a been a, a bond, I'd say, to the wall a little bit below the surface. So perhaps the cork was a bit thin or a bit watered down by wiping off it towards the, crop, the, the top, which led to the cracking. You can see that I did push it well into the MDF, so it really has bonded to the MDF. I'm going to take the time now to, to take off what I can near the surface just to get a clean edge and give it all a good wipe. So when it comes to refitting it after the floor's done, that it should go in fairly cleanly with a new cork line. Well, that's clean enough for me and a bit, bit of cork left there on the surface should aid the next cork bonding onto it. You can see here how I've cleared a little notch in the back just with a force a bit, 20-25mm maybe, which I've just driven in and then chiselled off a little bit at the bottom purely to allow the top to fit over the slight added thickness of this bracket and screw, which is the method that we use for securing these back to the wall. Now when we fit these jobs, one place we do touch up with the paint is just along the skirting here because that goes on as a separate piece. It's corked and then it's it's painted. I see there's a little slight bit of cracking there again disappointingly but a lot of what you see is dirt that will wipe off. Now the next stage of the dismantling would be to remove that because the uh, the scribe there on the wall that has been tucked in 
into a notch in the skirting, which I've cut out with, with the multi-tool. Now, if I just go straight in with the Stanley knife, then I'm going to risk scratching the surface here because I really want to hold it as straight down into the joint as I can. I don't want that to, to scratch. I'm also going to risk gouging a little bit sideways into that surface. So I'm going to do it with the Japanese marking knife, something I got from Axminster, really designed more for putting a very precise mark on wood as a little cut line. But because I can hold that flat against the surface, I think I'll get a bit more control getting down into that gap. adhesive I was using then was clearly more than strong enough. It shows I think that although it seems a little cheap to stick these things on, why, why would you do any mechanical fixing when it's simply not going to come off until somebody has to pry it off? And using modern things like good adhesives, gap filling adhesives, does allow you to get that pristine pre-sprayed finish without having to through fix. Now that that's come off, you can see how that mitre joint was constructed with a domino joining the two parts, which does make it nice and strong. So we bring these to site pre-sprayed with a fairly generously oversized return. And in most cases, the alcoves do, the, the units do come further forward, so you have more of a return back there. Often, I'm not quite sure until I fit it how much of a return it needs and in this case it was just a very slight return that I kept because the strip did sit slightly forward in the skirting so it did have a return of a couple of millimetres to get a good fit there. <laughs> Just slightly tearing the MDF, I'm not sure you can see this little hairline crack just down there opening up because it, as it wants to prise forward, the bond here to the unit is stronger than the bond of the MDF itself, which again really begs the question, why would you take the time to do a mechanical fixing like a domino into that when this really could hardly be stronger using this gap filling adhesive? It's just occurred to me, it may be a better approach now to leave all those strips stuck on, knowing how well bonded they are, Try and just debond all the edges to the wall there. Pop these space plugs out. I've managed to just pull that one out already. And take these brackets off. And I may then be able to just lift the whole unit up and out as it is. <laughs> has just been in, in and reminded me that the skirting is all coming off anyway for the redoing of the flooring so yeah, that certainly came off a lot easier than my bit so that really shows how I'm over engineering with the amount of stick I'm adding to the walls <laughs> covering those front faces so they, they don't get damaged and get everything else packaged up and uh, we'll be back to fit it once the flooring's done.
Plaza valid until at least 28th of March. The distributors got on for season C, village of charges and restrictions. <laughs> Pin them on, level and pin them on. They're pre-drilled with six millimeter holes, countersunk, pre-fitted with these modesty blocks with 25 millimeter screws. And then I'm gonna through drill that six mil hole, um, put a red plug in, it's an Uno plug, put a 60 millimeter screw in, and then, then they're fixed and then I'm trimming my parts, my shelf parts to fit. And... Shelves are in, so now it's time to refit these cabinets. Customers helped me carry them back in. Unfortunately, there's been a bit of miscommunication because the skirting coming close to the alcove should have been left off to be fitted up to the unit, so it's a bit harder for me now. I'm gonna to have to pop the rear skirting off because the way these were fitted before, they were tied to the wall. I often wouldn't fit that way, them that way, but that's how, that's how they were, which means that the countertop has been cut tighter to the wall. You can see that because these brackets are fairly flush to the back. So I'm going to need to fit them in the same way so the countertops go straight back on. Now to complicate things a little bit further, the customer would like us to match up the skirting, so to refit the same skirting profile across the front, which is about 60 millimetres taller than what we had before. So the whole thing's going to have to raise up so we can just pop these 100 millimetre feet out, which is what we normally use. And luckily we did have some knocking about in 150 millimetres, which are the same type. They're called PEMS, PEMS feet from Hart Wholesale. They're the only ones I could find that have this sort of squared off um, top, which just works for the way we like to fit them. Yeah, so swapping them out, and what I'm gonna do is just decide the line at which I want the skirting to land, which I'll put, let's say six millimetres off this edge. And then I can just, I can cut that then to fit around the skirting so I don't have to notch the skirting there it will just drop on sit on top of that cut and then I'll hide the cut with the skirting that will match around the front. The height we actually need is going beyond the adjustment of these legs so I've got some scrap from the van 18 millimeter and just cut it where the legs are going to sit so I can get them up a bit higher. Lucky in a way really that we're lifting up so much because it does just allow my hand to get under that fixed lip which would have been a problem if we were fitting them back as they were. I've got this one screwed back to the wall and I've just loose fitted some space plugs there with gap filling adhesive. I've gone ahead and popped those doors back on, bearing in mind they haven't been adjusted on their hinges since they were fitted before and there's just a slight disparity which suggests to me that the the carcass is racked a little bit that way. So I'm going to loosen off this space plug and tighten this one just in, until it's sort of tipping those doors back to being in line and taking away the very slight taper that there is at the bottom. Yeah, that's done it. It really was as simple as just getting that nice and tight with that one being loosened so that it's tightened up to it. And that has just tipped that door back to in line and everything's looking parallel. I haven't done this in a while, proper skirting joints, but doing okay. So I 45 degree that, I mean, it doesn't look close great up, but that, that this doesn't look great close up, I should say. That'll, that'll cork, a bit of filler needed there. Okay, so 45 at the other end and then coping saw cut in, a jigsaw cut in, I should say. And then I've 45 it here for the external corner. And I've just got a little infill bit to do there. It's gonna be tricky. I'm wishing it was MDF because that'd be less likely to split than the pine. I honestly haven't used a chop saw on site for months, if not years, because we always pre miter things in the workshop and I don't do gem old skirting and things anymore, though I used to. So I've resorted to propping this up with my foot to get up to the level, holding it tight there and doing my best and it doesn't help that the saw blade looks like it really needs sharpening, but look, I've managed to create this little piece by cutting the scribe first and then chopping it off at the angle. And I think given that this is gonna be painted, I should be able to make that work.
almost there with this. I've just unwrapped that top and it just goes back in nicely as it should. So I'll cork it, smooth it off, screw it from underneath and we're done on that one. Customer's gonna paint the skirting.